Let's turn your Bibles tonight to Romans chapter 5. And I want somebody to come to the mic. And I want you to read verse 12 down to verse 21. While you're reading it, I have something I want to talk to you about that I believe this God has given me a message for you tonight. So let's read, say Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For until the law sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, had abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon, upon all men to condemnation. Even so, by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. I read that again, verse 19. Praise God. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Amen. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. For where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin had reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. I want to talk on the subject tonight. There is hope for Humpty Dumpty. There is hope for Humpty Dumpty. When I was a child, as many of you can well remember, you will never forget those sayings about Humpty Dumpty sat on the wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king horses and all the king men couldn't get Humpty Dumpty together again. But I want you to know tonight that even though Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, none of the king horses and none of the king men could get him together at all. There is still some hope for hump to dump. And my message tonight is not really about the hump to dump that we have been talking about since we were children. The hump to dump tonight could be you. Hump to dump tonight is man. I want you to know man represent hump to dump tonight. Many of you have had some tough situation in this year. And some of you have had some situations so devastated, you've told people there's no way in the world you could get it back together. But I want you to know tonight that there is some hope for every humpty dumpty tonight. It's not over until it's over. 
The Bible said even though sin came in the world by one man, also grace and salvation came by one man. So there is hope for every Humpty Dumpty. Now I want to show you how man was Humpty Dumpty and he fell off the wall. First of all, we understand in the book of Genesis, God made man. God was lonely and he wanted some company. He sat down and thought about a world and he started speaking, let there be. And let fell in love with be and both of them had a relationship and produced a creation. You ought to get that later. When God spoke and his word leaped over rails and dells and when it settled down, it hatched out a universe with let there be. And when God got through making the world, God decided to make him a man. Now God made man for one purpose, and that is the fellowship and for man to fellowship with him. Now man fellowship with God by praising God. The angels praise God all night and all day. And that's the reason why God made man so that man will worship him and love him. And as long as you keep a praise going, the enemy cannot defeat you. Now many of you don't know how to say hallelujah anyhow. <clears throat> But if you're going to make it, you're going to have to learn how to say hallelujah anyhow. Because the devil is out to take away your praise. Most of us get on our knees and we start begging. But we don't realize that the power to succeed is not asking God for a favor, but thanking him for the favors you already have. And when God, you see, anytime people beg you for something and have them thank you for what you've done for them, you will stop giving. So you have to learn how to say, God, I don't understand what is happening to me. I don't know why I'm having these troubles. I don't know why I'm having these trials, but hallelujah. Anyhow, then you made the devil out of a lie because the devil said, if I take the car, if I take the house, if you take job, if you take away their loved one, they'll stop praising. So God made man to praise him. Now, man had a good thing. He was a Humpty Dumpty because he was on a high wall. Humpty Dumpty was on a high wall before he fell. He was in a position where he could see anything. Humpty Dumpty, by the way, is an egg. And man needs to realize that he's nothing but an egg. I don't care who you are, you're still an egg. Now some of you think you're gold and when you fall you won't crack. But touch your neighbor and say, you're an egg, buddy. Yeah. Oh, sister, amen. I don't care how big you think you are, how mighty you think you are, you're an egg. you so much an egg to some of you can't even stand folk lying on you or crack on that. Some of you will crack when you get bills too big. Some of you will crack when you have bad health. Some of you will crack when friends leave you because you're nothing but an egg anyhow. And man was like an egg. He was on a high wall. And watch it when your God elevates you and puts you on a high wall so you can see everything. Because you're in a position to fall. Am I right about it? Man had it going for him. Listen, Adam Adam didn't have nothing to worry about. He didn't have to pay no rent. He didn't have to pay no light bill, no water bill, no insurance. He had it made. He could walk out. He had the birds singing for his music at the radio. He had the full wind blowing for his air condition. He had the green grass for his outdoor and indoor carpet. He had rocks and wood to set on for furniture. He had the, the fish playing in the water for his excitement and his movie and entertainment. Man had it made. But isn't that the way it is when God bless us we got it made? We always fall. 
God bless them with a little car. We move from a bicycle now to a car. We'll move from neck bone to T-bone and from horseback to Cadillacs and now you can't tell us nothing and, and we mess around, we start thinking we above everybody, scratching our head, looking at folk you grew up with, talking about who is this and come on with me. And before you know it, you will fall. Man was just that, just like that. He was doing good, had it made. And just like that, God saw that he was lonely. God saw he was lonely. And he gave him a woman. Now, you know, God was very serious when he made man. Because everything else he made, he spoke and said, let it be. But when he got ready to make man, he had to call the making committee. I mean, he couldn't even make man by himself. He had to say, come on, Holy Ghost in Jesus. Yeah. I, I, I could speak and tell everything else to come together, but when it comes to this joker, I need the Holy Ghost and Jesus. Yeah. Come on, Holy Ghost, because uh, uh, Jesus, you're going to need to help me. When he mess up, you got to go down there and die for him. Come back here, Holy Ghost. Don't go out the door. You need to help me because when Jesus come back, you got to go back and keep him straight. God called the making committee together and said, let us make man. And I'm glad he made man last. You notice when God made man, that was the last thing he made? And I used to wonder why didn't God make man first before he made the earth? And I think God had a lot of sense. Because if God had made man before he made the earth, man would have been around there meddling in God's creation. Telling God, now God, don't make free time more water and land. Man, if man had been right here, your head would be down here, your feet would be up there. He'd have been meddling about how you gonna look. So he didn't have nothing to do with God's creation when he came. He was already here. God just decided to make him out of dust. The cheapest thing money can buy. You know, I thought about this. God made man out of something cheaper than dirt. I can take dirt and grow flowers. I can take dirt and build up. Man, you have to pay for dirt. But I ain't heard nobody paying for dust. And I don't know why y'all walking around here thinking you so big, you nothing but a good looking piece of dust. I don't know why one piece of dust won't speak to another piece of dust. Touch your neighbor and say, you ain't nothing but dust. You're not even dirt, you dumb. And God made him out of dust of the ground, and out of all that, he put his spirit in him that made him a little lower than the angels, and he messed up. Now, 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 now when God made Adam, he gave him a woman, and, and God put him to sleep. You know God put Adam to sleep when he made Eve. That's why I don't, a man will never have more sense than a woman. When he woke up, she was looking at it. And brother, wait, brother, they're still looking at you while you sleep. Think about it. When Adam woke up, he was looking at it. And when he woke up and saw that mama, man, he said, good googie moogie. This is a bad mama jamma. You know, Eve had to been a good looking mama jamma. Anytime a man will leave God for a woman, she got to be good look. He gave up God before he would give up Eve. And when God made Eve and put Eve beside Adam, they had a good thing going. They were on a high wall. But what must mess up most folk? Why do most folk fall off the wall? Just the way Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, looking. <laughs> he fell off the wall, peeping. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, he got too comfortable up there. And our eyes always get us in trouble. How many of y'all paying child support now? Because of your eyes. Some of you broke now because you can't put nothing in church. Your eyes got to a pocket. 
and gluttonous. You see, they start looking at the fruit. They start looking and watching what God told them not to mess with. Your eyes can get you in trouble. And how the dumb the guy in trouble? Looking, peeping. And the next thing mess Humpty Dumpty up was because he didn't know how to be still up there. <laughs> Most of us, when God bless us, we don't know how to be still. We run off at the mob, we tell people our business and tell people our plan, bragging about how you, what all you have and what all you got. And before you know it, you slip and you fall. You better learn to shut your mouth. I told you everything where I don't people but their tongue. People eyes get dim, step get shot, but I ain't heard nobody tongue wearing out. Old and sick and can't walk, lying on everybody. I ain't never heard nobody tongue wearing out. You better watch your mouth bragging about what you have and where you're going. You better learn how to be still. When God promotes you, be careful who you trust. And Adam and Eve messed up. Another reason they messed up listening to snake talk. A snake came. A snake came and talked to Eve. And, and, and how many of y'all have messed up now listening to snake talk? How many of you falling off some wall listening to snake? And you already know it's a snake? I would not entertain a snake and I know it's a snake. You already see the joke of lying now and you're going to marry? Look, he won't even pay rent now and you're going to marry? Uh oh. <laughs> Man, when you, and, and I often tell some men, you know, before you marry a woman, you ought to go check out a kinfolk. You ought to find out what you're getting in. You may be getting into a whole pile of snakes. <laughs> I'm telling you now, if a person already miserable, sad, always depressed, never happy, see everything negatively, what do you think they're going to do when you hook up with them? They're not used to nothing, they ain't had nothing, they don't know how to appreciate nothing. You better be checking out what you're getting in. Because snakes are available and snakes start talking to Eve. So many are messed up listening to snake talk. You lose your home listening to some woman telling you about what you shouldn't do. Snake talk. Tell your child I wouldn't take that if I were you. That's why she doesn't help nobody. You watch people who talk and they don't have nothing. Before you know it, that's a snake. And snake talk messed up Adam and Eve. And they were on the wall and how did they fall? Disobedience. Hump the dump that fell off the wall. Yes, Adam and Eve fell off the wall because they wouldn't obey God. And, and, and what happened to most of us when we fall and God come asking us about it, we want to blame somebody. You see now, when, when Adam and Eve messed up, when Adam messed up, God came walking in the cool of the day saying, Adam, where art thou? And what is this that thou hast done? What? He, didn't, he didn't even confess. You know, it's a mystery. If Adam had just said, God, I'm sorry. I wonder where we'd be here. Mm. Have it ever dawned on you that Adam never repented? He never did say to God, I'm sorry I did it. Before he would say, God, I'm sorry, he said, the woman you gave me. You read it for yourself. He didn't say, God, I'm sorry, I disobeyed you. He said, oh, God, if, if you hadn't given me this woman, I wouldn't have messed up. Now, he didn't call her Eve in, the woman. Read Genesis 3 for yourself. The woman, and they want to make it look like it's God's fault. You gave me. As I say, I didn't ask for her to start with. You gave me. And God looked at Eve and said, what are you doing? She said, the snake. 
everybody trying to blame somebody. Most of us, when we fall off the wall, we're always trying to blame somebody. My daddy didn't love me when I was four. Reverend, the reason why I can't treat my wife right, my daddy slapped me when I was seven. Grow up, man. Stop blaming some of your kinfolk by the, being the way you are. Stop talking about it's in my gene and I can't keep nobody. <laughs> oh, I don't have to get no amen. I remember no when I start cutting. If you need a band aid, I got one. I pass the Reverend pass it one say, ouch. Stop blaming people. I get tired of us going around trying to blame our fair young white people. Well, white folk don't like me. Let me tell you something. White folk ain't really never stole nothing from me. Now, if you keep looking at me, I'll tell you who. I don't have no trouble with white folk <laughs> stealing my hood caps. I, I told you, when you look out there and your hook cap gone, a brother got him. <laughs> you go home tonight, somebody been in your house, a brother did it. And you go home and your wife go. <laughs> brother got her too. Amen. We hurt each other. Stop blaming things on white people. The worst enemy is you. You know who's the enemy? The enemy is the inter me. Your real enemy is the inter-me. The one inside of you. The inner you is your enemy. If you learn how to live with you, you can live with us. If you learn how to love you, you can love everybody. But if you don't love you, you don't love nobody. Stop blaming things on other people for your failure. The Bible tells us that many men have failed. Now if Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, then the king horses couldn't get him together at all. I'm going to talk about the king horses before I talk about the king men. What kind of horses have tried to get man together? I tell you about some horses we try to use to get us together. One of them is the psychic. That's a horse. When you mess up and you fall off the wall, the first thing some of you do, you start calling it a psychic. Don't even have money to pay your rent. And there you are owing a phone bill to a psychic. Somebody trying to tell me something about somebody who can read my sign and had me calling me one night, Reverend. Uh, I, I got a man, I want to tell you, since you lost your son, he see the vision and said you had a great loss and he got a word for you. I said, yeah. This preacher come telling me about it and I just got so sick of it. I said, all right, who is it? This prophet so-and-so. He called me one night and the next thing he wanted to tell me, oh, oh, well, when your birthday? I said, you the prophet, tell me. <laughs> I tell you when I'm born, you're going to read up on my sign and tell me everything. Some of y'all go to these palm readers and, and they go to pulling out some cards and looking in your hand talking about, mm. <laughs> I, I see somebody in your life kind of dog and, and slim and first thing you're talking about, yeah, Uncle Harry, Uncle Harry. <laughs> How many dog tall folk you know? <laughs> Plenty of them. And then they're going to tell you about where him rub a little this on you and that'll keep the spirit off you. Don't be looking at me like you don't know what you're talking about. And won't nobody know this stuff is on you. Yes, they will when they start smelling you coming. (laughs) 
है दिस साकी थिंग इज गेन बी हॉट नाउ एवरीबॉडी पिक अप फोन कॉल इन द साकी ऑल दे गॉट टू हैव इज अ टू और थ्री लिटिल मूव स्टार कम ऑन देयर टॉक माइट बी गॉट द आंसर and if you search out their life and find out about them and read up on you find out they never been happy you don't need to be called in no psychic the bible has told us to stay away from that you supposed to live every day one step at a time trusting in the almighty god God has taken care of you and if God took care of you in 1997 he'll take care of you in 1998 I don't need no psychic I can already look back and set too many dangers for the sails I've already come grace It wasn't nothing but God's grace I don't need no psychic. Years ago, some boys broke and stole Mama Lucy Cadillac, and Mama Lucy come call the police and said, "I want y'all to find the jokers who stole my Cadillac." The police got smart, said, "Well, Mama Lucy, since you've been looking in your ball all these years, telling everybody about the trouble, look in the ball and tell us who stole it." <laughs> She cussed the police out. Well, if all that stuff been working for other folk, how come it won't work for her? Some of y'all going to these folk talking about a sign? You know, folk going to one night they don't do nothing unless they have a sign. Man, meet a woman, want to know, well, baby, what's your name? And our uh, baby, what's your sign? Are you a Capricorn? Are you? Are you a Pisces? What well, I want to tell you about a sign, baby, is when you find a Negro, it won't work. <laughs> That's the sign. If you find a woman won't cook, that's your sign. Oh. Need no psychic. That horse won't work for me. There's another thing going around here trying to put folk together. Whether you know it or not, is drugs. Drugs can't get you together. You can smoke all the pot you want. I used to wonder sometimes when I hear folks sniffing all day long, talking about they got a cold, and a fella told me, "Rev, that ain't no cold. That that stuff done burned that took a hair out his nose." <laughs> You know when I was coming along, grass was something we played in. Crack was a hole in the wall. Coke was a Coca-Cola. Drugs can't do nothing for you but just drug you up. I don't want nothing making me feel like I'm rich and I don't have a quarter. If you want that kind of illusion, go on up the street. <laughs> Another thing y'all use to try to put yourself together: liquor, whiskey. I'm talking about Jack Daniels. Touch your neighbor, say I remember that. Let me tell y'all something. I know there's one thing in our community. Everything leave our town but a liquor store. Woo! And you know, silly folk call it whiskey, and church folk call it medicine. Or uh, uh, Rev, give me a little medicine. But can't nothing hold that stuff but the bottle. And when you think you hold that stuff better than the bottle, there you are in trouble. Am I right about it? We love that whiskey. 
man was walking along the street one time, drunk, and he fell back and busted something. And he swallowed, Lord, I hope it's blood. Don't let it be my bottle. Hallelujah. Some of us rather cut ourselves than to lose that bottle. But those horses, and I got one more to tell you about that I was disturbed about some folk going around thinking education is going to get folk together. No, it won't work. You got people who are saying they are psychiatrists needing psychiatric treatment. If education was so good, how come we got so many smart crooks? You can't get this world together by education. Look at what science and education has given us. Huh? God Almighty, with science now, you can make paper out of trees. You can make, you can get electricity out of water. Chewing gum out of rubber. Gas out of garbage. Smart. Man now has computers. Can tell you on a little point of a pen of a computer all about your history. We're in the last day. But with all this knowledge we have, kids are stabbing principles. We're in split level home with split personality. We ride around in air conditioned cars with hot tempers. With all this knowledge we have, we still weak. Still crime in the city. Still people are stealing from one another. I think I told the story a man was talking to another man. He saw a man stealing watermelons. And another man said to a gentleman standing with him, he said, now if that man was educated, he wouldn't steal no watermelon. The other man said, no, if he was educated, he'd figure out a way to steal the whole pack. I got to close here. Time done caught up with me. But I want to tell you, some other folk came trying to get Humpty Dumpty together. After the horses couldn't get them together, the king men tried. God has sent a whole lot of men to try to get man back together. They were called the king's men. Glory to God. First man God sent to try to get man back together was Noah. Noah was a keen man. Soon as the earth, he began to settle down. Noah got drunk. He couldn't get him together. And then God went and got Jacob. Changed the name, but he wasn't nothing but a trickster. Jacob couldn't get Humpty Dumpty together again. God reached and got Abraham. Abraham, you supposed to be the father of the faithful. And soon as Abraham got in trouble, told a lie about his wife. He couldn't get man together again. Then God said, well, I think I'll try somebody else. I'm going to send Moses. He sent Moses to try to get Humpty Dumpty together again. And Moses had a temper. And couldn't go to the Holy Land, the Promised Land, because he couldn't control his temper. Somebody don't help me. God said, well, I think I'm going to try now. A man named Elijah. If he can call out far from heaven, maybe he can get man together. Soon as old Jezebel got after Elijah, he took all running and told God to take his wife away. Don't tell me a woman won't make you run. Isn't that amazing? Elijah could stand on Mount Carmel and call out far. And wasn't scared of nobody. But soon as Jezebel sent him a letter. He took all running. And then asked God to take my life away. He didn't want to die. If he wanted to die, all he had to do was sit still. Jezebel would have gotten it. I want to show you how all these men fell. And then God said, I'm going to send a man after my own heart. Named David. 
and see if David can get man together. And soon as God started blessing him, he got up on the rooftop and saw a good looking woman and had her husband killed to get her. Then God said, well, I think I'll bring along a wise man now named Solomon and see with all his wisdom, can he get man together? And he ended up being a wise fool. In time, you think you can handle a thousand women. And you know, I, I, I found out when I studied about the life of Solomon, I found out he died young. Solomon didn't live long. I guess so with a thousand women. You won't live long either. Somebody don't understand that. Solomon couldn't get man together. God said, I'm tired. God said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I sent all these men. Every man got a fault. Look at it. Moses couldn't keep his temper. Elijah couldn't be still from fear. Abraham lied. Jacob tricked folk out of everything. Job called God in question. Hmm? All these men that supposed to be perfect, supposed to be good, even the best of men in our country got false. And then they talk about Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was a great man, but never joined the church. We even said that there's some things that come out against Martin Luther King because he was human. Don't get too upset. You got a problem. How can you throw rocks and live in a glass house? Some of you all out here talk about, I hear you lie. I don't go to church because the folk in there ain't right. Well, everybody on your job not right, but you haven't left there. You can always find an excuse for what you don't want to do. But you get out, you keep running. Something going to run into you. And these folk you call hypocrites, you're going to be in here looking for them. Pray for me. God will fix it so you eat up your own words. Then you hear what this young man talking about what God delivered him from six years ago. Just an example that you can come together again. God said, I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't have but a few minutes. I'm already over 12 o'clock. But since I'm over 12 o'clock, I can stand here tonight and tell you God can get you together again. Won't he get you together? How did he put us back together? One Friday. It was one Friday. Jesus came down. And they put an old cross on his shoulder. Look at him riding and falling. Said man can't get man together. But there's hope for Humpty Dumpty. Jesus God's perfect son. Put the cross on his shoulder. Look at him riding and falling riding falling riding falling represent a riding and falling generation went on up to Calvary hung, bled and died nobody could get us together but the king can I come by to tell you quit looking for the horses and looking for the men horses and also looking for the king men and look for the king. Am I right about it? He's the king. He is the king. Somebody here can tell you. I know he got us together. One man brought sin in the world. 
but another man into sin and brought us salvation. Look at him dying. Can't you see him dying? Dying to get me together.